Now, I'm sure you know there's a lot of talk about trying to figure out a way to make Nigerian politics more equitable, meaning bringing more women into the leadership space. Progress to close that gender gap in Nigeria's political leadership has been, to say the least, glacial, which means in effect that it's been ludicrously slow. Less than 20% of Nigerian politicians are women, so calls have been ringing out for that to change. One of those who's answered that call to step into the mix is Albertine Doibo. She's a governorship aspirant in Bielsa State under the banner of the Labour Party. She's also a businesswoman. And if she has her way, she might just become the woman who will light that path and illuminate the rest of the country. So how likely is that in this great bastion of male political dominance? Well, from on this, I'm delighted to say that I'm joined now from our studios in Lagos by the Labour Party governorship aspirant in Bielsa State and businesswoman, Albertine Doibo. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. And... Um, Thank you, Charles, for having me. Sure, thank you. Uh, we're, we're very appreciative of your taking the time to talk to us. Uh, and well done to you for braving the treacherous waters of Nigerian politics and getting yourself immersed in it. How much of a psychological battle was it for you to decide to get into this male-dominated, money-driven world of Nigerian politics? Well, like you know, it's a psychological battle, you know, you have to go through within yourself. But I have made the decision to put myself out there. It, it was a lot of thinking, it was a lot of um, negotiations with myself, self-talk. And I made up my mind because there is a gap, a leadership gap in Bielsa. And the men have done their bits, and they are doing their bits. And we have seen how far Bielsa has come, or how Bielsa has compa performed compared to other states that were created at the same time with Bielsa. So there is a huge gap to be filled, and I'm putting myself out there. I'm volunteering myself. I'm hoping that other women will follow suits and embrace me in this challenge that I have taken. But um, I know it's a big challenge, but I'm here to stay. Well, I mean, we're extremely proud of you to, for making that leap, because we do actually need more women in, in Nigerian politics. And, um, but it's not your first outing, though, is it? I mean, you were once a senatorial aspirant, but that didn't work out, did it? I mean, what party did you run under, and, and how and why did it go belly up? Well, I, it's not my first outing, like you have said. It's, I, I ran for Senate with PDP in, in the last dispensation. And like you know, it's a man's world. Um, we have been built, we have been conditioned to believe that politics is for men. And the men have made it difficult and a up uphill task for women to come in. And so um, I did not make the primaries because I wasn't an anointed candidate of the then governor. So I did not make it through the primaries. But um, I'm here again. I'm hoping this time Labour is a more liberal party, is a more open party. And I'm hoping that we will perf I will perform better and possibly be the flag bearer for Labour party, uh, um, gubernatorial elections that are coming in November. Well, certainly um, persistence and tenacity are two things that are absolutely essential in politics, and, and you do seem to be displaying uh, both of those. And of course, at this stage, you're preparing to compete in the primaries, which I understand is uh, scheduled to take place imminently. So that's your first big battle in the race to be governor. How prepared are you for it, and how do you assess your chances? 
Well, I, I am assessing my chances like any other. I have the same chance like any other person that is in the race. Um, I'm known by my people. Um, I'm, I meet all the conditions. I meet all the criteria. I'm capable. I'm a woman. I put myself out there. I brought my self as a woman to the table just as I am. I'm nobody's stooge. I don't plan to step down. I'm not sitting in for anybody. I'm not a placeholder. I am here to run the gubernatorial um, election and I'm hoping that the party will be fair enough because they have promised a free and fair process for this um, election. I've been talking to, I part, hoping to be part of um, the primaries that will come soon, probably next week at most. And I believe I will do well. And uh, what would it mean to you if you emerged as the Labour Party's governorship candidate in Bielsa State? If, if I emerge as a candidate, then that's victory for women. You know, it's another victory for women. It will be a big win by just emerging. We, we see what's going on with the Adamawa State um, candidates. That's one candidate I've supported, even if we have, we both come from different parties, right? But if I, it turns out that I come out to be the gubernatorial candidate for Labour, then Bielsa itself has won. That's a big change. Bielsa's are looking for change. And the only change that they need is a gender change right now, because the men have performed and outdone themselves. And Bielsa is where it is. Bielsa is crying for leadership. There is a gap to be filled. We don't need more um, men that are used as... Uh, you know how candidates emerge in parties. Strong men bring people who are loyal to them. It's either um, a strong man is leaving the position and he wants someone to sit in for him, or a strong man they need a strong man to remove another strong man from office. That's how leaders emerge in, in Bielsa. The parties, as they are structured, do not allow for, a, for a, the right candidates to emerge. You know, the, 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 the eco, political ecosystem, as it were today, does not allow for a female candidate to emerge. But I'm taking the chance. I, I have taken that chance before, and I'm taking it again. This time I trust the Labour Party, I believe in the Labour Party because they have proven that they are not going to be like other parties. It's not going to be money driven, it's going to be capacity driven, it's going to be experience driven, it's going to be um, what you know, bringing, the, the, it's going to be personality driven and not like it has been in the past. So I'm hoping by Elsa we have a good win if they allow a woman to emerge this time. Well, as you said there, it's not just about gender. It, it is, of course, about capacity. So tell us about yourself and why you believe you should emerge as the candidate. What experience do you have to justify that belief? Well, I am a graduate. I, mean, I have two master's degrees. I'm a safety engineer by profession. I worked in the oil industry where there are standards and standards are upheld, where there are processes and processes are followed. I'm, I'm trained internationally and I have left that scene and I've ventured into business and I believe that with my wealth of experience and exposure, that's what Bielsa needs. They need a human being much more than a female. They need a human being that knows what to do, a human being that will harness the capacity, the resources of Bielsa and put them into good use, into valuable use, and create value out of our resources that we have in Bielsa. Bielsa is rich. Bielsa is resourceful, is, is a place that can be productive. The Bielsans are resourceful. We have a lot of young people, human resources that are waiting to be explored, but we just need the right people to channel them properly. So we are looking at 
looking at me. I mean, I'm, I'm availing myself as the right person to work with the, the natural resources and the human resources that are lying dormant in Bielsa. Uh, from, from a lot of the things you just said, it certainly sounds like Bielsa State isn't or hasn't been a traditional bastion of gender equality, at least when it comes to politics. So you've got quite a challenge there. But as you said, you're hoping that the Labour Party will open that door uh, for you and base its assessment on capacity, which you say that you've got. And if you do win beyond just the primaries, the governorship, what would you be doing to bring more women on board? Or, or is that not part of your strategy or one of the objectives you hope to achieve if you become governor? If I become governor, um, the Bayelsan woman has won. The Bayelsan woman has an opportunity to speak. Um, we, will, uh, we will be deliberate in getting Bayelsan women into governance, into government, into um, positions of leadership. If I win, I, if I become governor of Bayelsa State, the Bayelsa woman has a place of pride where she can walk into the government house without having to be afraid if she will be turned back like it, 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 not, it is today. You know, she knows that she's coming to see her contemporary, her counterpart, a woman, somebody like her. You know, it gives her a place of pride. So we are going to create, we're going to accept them. We are women. We are, I'm a woman. I, I, I know how to, to work with my type. I know how to work with my gender. And I can speak the language of the Bielsa woman. I understand their needs, their peculiarities. I understand their, um, their pain, the, the pain of the Bielsa woman. Not just the Bielsa woman, the youths in Bielsa are waiting to be carried along to... They are, they are a ready tool to be used for the development of Bielsa, you know. So um, there are lots that we will do. The woman, the woman in Bielsa is a strong woman. She's not lazy. She, the woman from Bielsa is a hard-working woman. The woman from Bielsa is, 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 is a family, is a builder, you know. She nurtures. The Bielsa women have, over time, taken care of families, you know, created... Bet, giving birth to strong people, you know, and have, and have created enterprises for themselves. They have, they have thrived on their own. And so if they have someone who can direct and channel them appropriately, we, we, will, we, will, we will do more for the states and for the families within Bielsa and the states at large. So um, it is hope for the Bielsa woman, and I believe they are all... Um, anticipating something good, that this will turn out the way they truly want, that there will be victory for the Bielsa woman, there will be emancipation for the Bielsa woman, because this, the, this political space as it were today is conditioned to favor the men. The political space, the men have the meetings at night, most of it is nocturnal, and it doesn't favor the average female, you know, but if we have a female governor, the men most likely will be more open to allowing their wives to participate because they know that they are coming to meet one of their kind, you know. So um, it's, it's, it's going to be a change, a peculiar kind of change that is welcome. And people, the Bielsans are anticipating and hopeful. Right. And uh, how do you gauge the strength of the Labour Party in Bielsa State? Because, I mean, it's been traditionally PDP territory and the APC seems to be second in the pecking order there. Well, um, I, I would not... It's easy to look at a PDP as the strongest party in, in Bielsa, but don't forget that. APC won the elections. PDP only took over the, 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 the position, the governorship position by court, right? So when it, came to, when it comes to the elections on ground, APC won the last election. So I would, not, um, I would not say PDP is the strongest. 
While I agree that APC and PDP are strong in Bielsa, Labour Party has made an inroad and the people want change. I know Bielsans are tired. They want something different. They are just looking for that, waiting for and anticipating for something new. Labour has come with um, this wave which its principal, Peter Obi, had carried and that goodwill has co continued in the States. So there is a, I understand there is a Labour Party assembly member in Bielsa, you know. So for me, that is a, a good step. The chances of Labour Party is as strong as any other party. Because in the last election, nobody expected APC to win in Bielsa. Bielsa of all places, which you have said is the stronghold of PDP. So that tells you something has shifted. You know, something has shifted. People are tired. There is an apathy for PDP. People want change. And Labour appears to come with that, the promise of the change that the people are anticipating. Okay, well, um, we, we wish you all the very best in, in that quest. And as you advance forth, um, Thank you. do come and talk to us again. Um, I'm sure many people will be watching your political trajectory very keenly. Thanks again for joining us. And that's uh, Albertine Doibo, who is a businesswoman and Labour Thank Party you. governorship aspirant in Bielsa.